Hi guys. So today we're going to cover subtracting layers. So I'm going to be making a decal for an acrylic keychain. And so I want it to look the same on both sides instead of just being layered on one side and the back's going to have kind of crazy different colors going on. So I've downloaded this file from the Silhouette Design Store. This is Black Cat on Pumpkin. And I actually only want the black cat part. This is how it comes in um, when you open it in your program. So I want to resize it. It's big enough that we can see what's going on. But I don't want the pumpkin. So let's get rid of that. Let's move this out of the way. We're going to right click and ungroup. And I'm going to delete all of this pumpkin because we don't need that. And so now we have all of our pieces. Let's resize them a little bit. And move it all here on the mat so you get a good look at what we're doing. And the first thing I want to do is color everything the color that it's going to be. I'm going to open my fill color panel and we're going to go through and color. Oh, that's the line style. Let's open the fill color. And this is going to be white, but we're going to go with light gray so you can see it. This is going to be the dark gray that you see here. And then we have black. And then we have the black pupils. The dark gray whiskers. Oops. And the iris. And I'm going to do copper. I'm going to do this to look kind of like my kitty and she has copper eyes. And then I want to select everything and make my line, uh, my cut lines transparent. When we go to line things up, those cut lines are going to get in the way. So if we just make the color transparent, we're not going to be able to see them and they're not going to be in the way. Okay, so now that we've made our lines transparent, let's start subtracting. And so we can start um, either with the cat or the eyes, it doesn't matter. Let's start with the eyes. And what we want to do let's zoom in, is you want to line them up exactly. And so kind of get it close with your mouse and then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to kind of nudge things into place. This one as well, we're just going to nudge those in. And then you want to select both and we're going to open the Modify panel and click Subtract All. And so even though it doesn't look like it does anything, if you move this out of the way, you can see that it has subtracted the pupil area out of the iris area so that when you put your different layers together, it's going to look the same on either side. You can see the difference here where they would be stacked. So if you were to flip it over, you're only going to see the copper. So we'll select this one and Subtract All. So again, we have our cutout. We're going to group these together and group these together. And let's back it up. And now we're going to do the kitty cat. So we're going to put the black on top of the gray. Because these are the same size, we can use the transform, go to the center align, and this button's going to center them with each other. And you can see that they line up just perfectly. And then subtract. So now we have our gray and our black. And then with the white, we take these two, right click, group them together, and again we're going to center them and subtract. So now you see we have the white and the white on the belly. So now we need to subtract the, the eyes from the white of the eyes. So we're going to bring these down and again, you want to use your arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge them into place. So you can see they're in place. And then I'm just going to do one at a time. One eye and subtract. And then the other one and subtract. So now you can see that we've cut that out. And then we can bring this back into place. Again, you can Use your arrow keys to nudge. It can be a little hard sometimes, especially with that light gray, to see if there's 
any white area around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that light gray. Let's just turn it blue. And then that way we can nudge this easier. And then we can click that blue again, make it light gray. And then we just have our whiskers. Group those together, bring them down, line them up just where you want them. I love using those arrow keys to nudge. And then we're going to select this. And let's subtract. And so now when you pull the whiskers out, you see that area. Okay, so I'm going to be putting this onto a 2 inch acrylic keychain. And so what I want to do is I want to resize. I'm just going to make myself a little template here. I'm going to draw a circle. If you hold down the shift key while you draw your circle, it will stay round as opposed to an oval that you can move around. That shift key locks that. And then we can go to transform and click this aspect lock ratio, type in 2 inches and apply. So now we have a 2 inch round circle. And then we're going to take the cat and resize to fit inside that circle. Zoom in here. Let me give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And there we go. So now we're, we're sized. I can delete this circle. And let's move it up here. I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to make our registration boxes. I'm going to replicate. And get rid of a few. I like to have three. Space those evenly apart. And if I'm going too fast for this, I do have several videos on the registration boxes and the layers. So you can refer back to those. It might help. And then I'm going to duplicate. So we need four copies. And then we're going to delete the colors. And these are some of these layers are grouped together. So let's select everything, right click, and ungroup. And that's going to ungroup all our layers. So for the first one, let's do black. So we'll have to delete everything that's not black. All this gray out of here. And then this one we will do the dark gray. So everything else has got to go. All these little pieces. And when you do subtracted layers like this, you really do need to use a registration box. This is the easiest way to get things lined up. I mean, you don't have to, obviously, but they really make a huge difference. Oops. Yep, let's go to. I just want the copper now. I'm going to drag and select everything. And then the light gray is last. We'll get everything other than the. Well, it'll be white when we go to cut. And there we go. We have our four layers. So we'll cut our black, our dark gray, our copper, and our white. I'm going to get those cut and we'll come back and we will put it together. Okay, so I've cut everything and I went ahead and weeded all of the pieces. And I'm going to cut off a piece of app tape 
And this is my new favorite application tape. This is the uh, medium tack clear transfer tape from 651 Vinyl. And I will link to that. But I've saved some scrap pieces, so I have a few little pieces left over here. And because our layers are subtracted from one another, it doesn't really matter what order we do them in, which is quite different from how we've done it in the past. But I'm going to start with the white layer. Cut a little bigger piece than that. I do like to have a little bit of wiggle room. I just love this application tape. It's less than $10 and you get 30 feet. Comes on this nice little one inch core roll. So it doesn't take up a ton of room in your, in your craft space. I usually save little pieces for stuff just like this. I just didn't happen to have one big enough. Okay, so we're gonna start with the white layer. burnish that down. Again, I have several videos on layering with registration boxes. I'm not going to get real in depth with it right now, but it is more important than ever when you have subtracted your layers to get them lined up right where you want them. Lost one there. Okay. And then we'll do the gray. And hopefully, everything lines up where it's supposed to be when we put this last layer down. Can be a little tricky, and working on something this small can be really tricky. But I wanted to put it on something that was going to be see-through on both sides. So it wasn't perfect, and that's okay. You can see there's a little bit off um, here with the gray, but I'm not I'm not super worried about it. Okay, so we've trimmed it down, and so I'm going to put this on an acrylic keychain, and this is a two-inch acrylic keychain, and it comes with paper on top. So you can see there's like a paper on both sides and this protects the acrylic from getting scratched. So I'll just take my tweezers, kind of go at it so that I can then peel off that layer. So now we have our first side exposed. You can go ahead and peel off both layers. I'm going to leave the other layer there just so that we protect it. And then of course, the backing off in our little holes right here. So I'm going to try to line it up right into that little hole. And burnish that down really good. And then this app tape is just awesome because it just comes right off with no trouble. And there we go. So now I can take off the other piece. And 
It can be a little tricky. You want to be careful you don't gouge out your acrylic. And there's the kitty on the other side. Looks like I had a little goof up with the black in between the whiskers. Let's see if we can fix that. You can always recut a <clears throat> excuse me, you can always recut a piece and fit it back into the um, into the design. I'm just gonna leave that out. So we have our cat. This is the front and then flip it over and there's the back. So you can see how we subtracted it. You can see it on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna put on our keychain. So I have jump rings. And when you get a keychain, sometimes they come with jump rings and key rings, sometimes they do not. But here is our little jump ring. And then I just got these really awesome tassels. I bought these from Amazon and I will link to them, but I would like to put a tassel on here. Let me get black. So these are really cute. They're like an inch and a half long, maybe. So I have everything ready. You want to take two pairs of pliers and I'll start by holding the jump ring and one set of pliers like this. Take your other set and you're going to twist it open. So now we have an open jump ring. So we'll start by putting the keychain. I might not have opened it far enough. Okay. Open a little more. I'm going to put the keychain on there. And I'm going to put the tassel, and then I'm going to put the jump ring on there, or the uh, key ring on there. And then you have to close it up, so you just twist it back. It can be kind of hard to do. Let's do it this way. It can be kind of hard to do when it's full. Just twist that back together. And then what I'm going to do is I have this little jump ring set of pliers and it will open that. Check that out. As you know, I don't want to break my nails. So you just take this. It's got that little tooth right there. Put it in between the rings and squeeze and it just opens that right up. So then we can feed that jump ring on there. And put the keychain on. So that's it. That's all there is to it.